have a Minolta MC Rocker PG 58 millimeter 1.2 lens here that I'm going to be fully disassembling. This lens is really well known for its great bokeh. Um, the out of focus areas on this lens when you're taking a picture at 1.2 are really appealing. It's not the sharpest lens, uh, but it's great for portraits because of that feature. You can see that the back element of this when it's fully open is huge. Almost the entire center section is glass. And if I bring in the Minolto uh, rocker 58 millimeter 1.4 here and then also the 155 millimeter 1.7 you can also just see how much larger the 1.2 is than the 1.4 and then also compared to the 1.7 it's about twice as heavy um, and they all use the same 55 millimeter filter but as you can see if I just have the 1.4 and the 1.7 here the almost the entire area where the filter goes on this one is glass, where on this one it's got this nameplate ring. And they actually had to move the nameplate ring uh, to the outside of this lens on this one and make it part of the focus and control ring instead of having a separate nameplate like on the 1.4. And if I just take out the uh, back of the, so you can see the back glass element as well, you can see how much larger it is on this 1.2 than the 1.4. It's about twice as heavy as well. So this particular lens is in pretty good shape. I've already taken it apart. Um, it, it is a little bit rough in the aperture control. Um, it takes a little bit of force to actually move it, but everything works properly um, in this lens. So I'm just gonna be taking this completely apart um, to get down to the aperture blades and then also to be able to clean the individual body sections. Um, even though this design looks really good, oftentimes these little grooves on the focusing ring or on the aperture control ring can collect a lot of dirt and grime. So being able to take off those individual body sections and being able to clean them is really helpful. And to do that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to get access to the aperture blades in case they're dirty. And then I'm going to go in from the front uh, of the lens to get access to those on the front, go in from the back to get access to both sides, and then completely disassemble the lens after that, and also talk about how you have to reassemble it um, to correctly focus it back to infinity. Overall, this lens is pretty difficult to take apart. Like I mentioned, because there's so much glass, you have to be very careful not to scratch anything, um, and the glass is so close to some of the areas that you have to be working in that that can be a little bit challenging. And also, because um, compared to the one four, where all the uh, mechanical mechanisms are inside the lens body, um, because there's glass pretty much in the entire center section of this lens, they really pushed all the mechanical elements out to this edge into this little ring around here. Um, so it's laid out very differently than the one four inside, even though they look very similar externally. So to start with, I'm just going to go in on the front of the lens and take off the front glass piece and get access to the aperture blades. To do that, there are two, there's a front little ring, black ring that has two slots for a spanning wrench here and here. I'm just going to go in with the spanning wrench and take that off. Um, this top glass ring isn't actually very close to the lens uh, or to the glass, but it looks that way probably on the video. I'm just going to go in with this spanning wrench. With that ring removed, what you'll notice now is that there are two sets, uh, two more rings here. You can kind of see there's this inner ring, um, which has which has four little divots for a spanning wrench going around. And that's actually what's holding in the front glass piece. And unless there's fungus inside the lens, you don't want to remove that. What you want to do is remove this outer ring that has um, two divots for the spanning wrench there and there. Um, so again, I'm going to go in with the spanning wrench um, and actually use a different one, the pointed spanning wrench, so I can get a little better access to the outer ring only, and go in and remove that. And I probably am getting a lot of fingerprints on the lens, but I think that's, uh, I find it safer to, to, to uh, just use my fingers rather than the spanning wrench um, so I don't scratch the inner glass here. Okay, that should, a little more. Okay. 
Now you can see this huge front glass group and the aperture blades all nicely exposed here. If I go and close it up a little, you can see the nice eight bladed aperture. So if there's only a very minor amount of oil, um, this is probably all you need to do. You can just go in with a Q-tip and very carefully clean the oil off the front of the blades only. But for anything more major where the blades aren't actually moving freely, where they're stuck or there's a lot of oil on them, um, we're going to have to get access to both sides of this diaphragm. And that requires that we remove this back glass piece as well. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to first show how to remove the back glass piece and then also show how to remove this entire diaphragm assembly here so that it can be cleaned much more thoroughly than it can be while it's still in the lens body. And to uh, do that, I'm going to just flip the lens over and you'll see that like the Minolta Rocker PF14 58mm lens, it has these eight screws going around. And there are two types of screws on this one. There's the longer screws and shorter screws. So I'll take out two neighboring ones just to show the difference. Okay, so there's the, one of the longer ones and one of the shorter ones. And the longer ones are what are, is actually attaching the mounting plate to the lens body. So those are the only ones you want to remove. And they alternate going around. So there's four of them, one, two, three, four. And unlike the Rocker um, PF or the Rocker um, 58 millimeter 1.4 lens, you can actually disassemble the back mounting plate assembly fairly easily. There aren't any ball bearings or other little components that can get lost and um, it's just really not necessary. So what I want to do is just lift off this entire back mounting plate assembly and not have to worry about any of that. So I'll remove the four longer screws and just lift that right off. You can see on this back assembly there's the stop down lever here and it has a little spring that's attaching this internal section that moves around to the external mounting plate. So I'll just set that aside. Now you can see the actual aperture control ring and then the entire back glass, uh, back glass thing here where it's starting up here and then going down to where the diaphragm assembly is. The back lens group is really this entire stack here. So this top black section um, has the two spots for the spanning wrench. But what that actually undoes is just this little black section. And then you can remove the back lens um, back lens element only. So it leaves these other internal, these other elements that are further back in the lens, it leaves those in place. So I'd recommend against taking this apart unless there's dust or fungus or something you're trying to clean out of the lens. So to remove the entire back lens group, I'm gonna go in with the spanning wrench and you can see that at this lower section here, there's two spots for the spanning wrench. It's the uh, lowest one right before the aperture control mechanism. I'm gonna actually go in and try to just undo that one section. It's a little bit difficult. So I just used a spanning wrench with pointy tips instead of the other one with flat tips. And now I'm unscrewing the entire back lens group. And you can take this off later too, um, but later in the disassembly if you can't get access to that properly. So now you can see the back lens group, which is very large compared to the 1.4 and the 1.7. Just set that aside. Now we have access to both sides of the diaphragm, can clean off the aperture blades, um, and really go in and use a little bit more uh, cleaning solution or whatever to clean off the oil here. You want to be very careful when you go in with a Q-tip that you don't apply too much force because these are very thin. Um, and later I'm going to get the entire mechanism out so it could be submerged and cleaned much better than it can be while it's still in here. So continuing on with the disassembly, um, this, this is a good point to stop if you only need to clean the aperture blades, but in this case I'm going to take the entire thing apart, get access to the individual body sections, this ring, 
here the aperture control ring, this ring which is the main body, and then the focusing ring here, get all those isolated so that they can be cleaned individually. And to start with, by, with doing that, I'm going to remove the aperture control ring, and that's just this metal ring back here that rotates. But like other lenses, it has a small ball bearing over here, it's actually what provides the clicking sound of the aperture um, when it rotates back and forth. So I'm going to just, this is not um, locked in place by anything, I'm just going to slide it off, but be careful with the ball bearing over there, it's pretty small. Okay, and you can see the little ball bearing is right there, resting in a little groove. I'm just going to carefully set that aside and set that whole thing aside. And now we have access to this main body section, which is what actually has the depth of field scale on it. And what I'm going to do to undo this, there are four screws going around here, 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 and here. And I'm just going to undo all four of those and lift that back section out. So one of the roles of the piece I just removed is to actually limit how far the focus ring can turn to prevent it from just unscrewing completely from the lens. Um, so this little post here clicks back and forth in this inner ring down here um, and there's two limiters I think right here or there's a limiter right here and here that actually prevent it from turning um, past a certain thing. And the reason that why that's important is that in many lenses you can just undo, go in from the front of the lens and undo the entire diaphragm mechanism and just lift that right out. But on this particular lens there is this black metal ring here which is what actually moves up and down when you focus in and out. So here I'll kind of simulate focusing in and out. And the reason why that's important is because it prevents you from actually removing the diaphragm. You can't just lift it right out, even though you can see these screws down here. Um, I haven't been able to undo those without undoing this entire front assembly uh, and being able to access the diaphragm on its own. So when we're refocusing the lens and resetting it back to infinity after taking off the focusing ring and cleaning it um, so that it focuses correctly at infinity, um, that's going to be important to remember. So I'm just pointing that out now. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to grab this, the uh, ring I was just describing and focus it a little more out. And you'll see I can now focus past where I could before. So I'm actually going past and I just want to carefully undo it until I can see these three screws there, there, and there. And those are what are actually holding this ring in it's connecting it to the diaphragm assembly. So I'm going to undo those so I can lift out the entire diaphragm assembly. And I don't want to undo it too far because that undoes the helicoils of the lens, um, which are these things down here, which is actually like the screw light type things that are focusing in and out. And if I do that, they're a real pain to put back together. So I just want to undo it enough to remove these three screws, um, but not too much to undo the entire assembly and have to play around putting it back in. Okay, so that just lifts right out. And now you can see that I do have access to these four little screws here, which are what are actually holding the aperture or the diaphragm assembly to the lens body. And to continue the disassembly, I'm going to remove this entire diaphragm mechanism from the lens body by undoing these four screws going around here. Okay, now I can just lift out the entire diaphragm assembly and have access to it on its own. The main lens body. And why this is good is because if there's really a lot of gunk on these aperture blades um, and they're not moving freely back and forth, you can actually go in and really, really clean this pretty well. Um, 
because it's not inside the lens body, you can use more cleaning fluid and actually go back and work this back and forth and it maybe even submerge the entire thing and clean it out very well. So I'm just gonna set that aside. One thing I should mention is that this does have an eight bladed aperture design. Um, so versus the 1.4, which has, I think, six blades, and the 1.7, which also has six blades. So if you do choose to take this apart and remove the individual aperture blades and clean them individually and then try to reassemble it, which you would do by taking out these three set screws here, 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 and here, and then removing this ring and then just lifting off the top plate that's on here, this black top plate, and then cleaning the individual blades. It's gonna be a little bit harder to put back together, but still doable because they are uh, a fairly uh, moderate size. Um, you just have to be a little bit, put in a little bit more work actually putting the entire thing back together because there's two more blades. Now to finish off the disassembly of this lens, what I'm gonna do is remove this body, the focusing ring here, the last body section, from the internal helicoils, which are the actual focusing ring, or the thing that focuses those, the lens in and out. And that's just so that this can be cleaned independently without messing up the focusing. Um, and you can see that there are two parts to this. There's the actual, <laughs> there, there's the actual focusing ring here, which is what you grip. And then there's this intersection, which is what normally holds the optics of the lens. And that's what's moving back and forth if I, it sits in this kind of bluish ring here, um, and I can move that freely back and forth or hold it in place and move the focusing ring back and forth. And what I wanna do is kind of just focus this inwards a little bit to expose another set of screws down here in this intersectional lens and kind of in this section that's sticking out if you look down from the top of the lens. And what these three or these four screws going around here do are couple the, the uh, last body section, this focusing ring, to the helicoils inside here. And what's important about this step is that once you undo these, there's nothing really that determines where this should actually lock in place um, on the, um, what, how the, the, the focusing ring should lock in place on the helicoils so that when you're focused at infinity, it focuses correctly, the lens is correctly focused at infinity. Um, there's no real good guide for that. So you, what you have to do once you undo these is go in and then manually adjust this and find the correct position to reattach the focusing ring here to the helicoils um, so that it is correctly focused at infinity when the lens body says it's focused at infinity. So I'm just gonna undo these um, but unless you really need to clean this last body section, I would recommend against doing that. And these uh, four screws do have a little washer on them as well. It kind of helps lock them in place. Okay, now I can just lift off this last body section pretty smoothly here, <laughs> hopefully. There we go. And have, here, I'll set this aside. You can see the entire focusing assembly and the last body section here. So what we've accomplished at this point is to completely separate the external body elements of the lens, which I'm gonna just get here, from all the internal mechanical workings uh, of the lens and from the glass. So you can really diagnose the problems with the lens um, and if it's a mechanical problem or an optical problem and take care of those with the aperture blades or with the actual focusing rings, which are there. And you can also go in and clean all these um, cosmetic external sections really well so they look really great. Um, and you can also clean the glass and try to remove any dust or other uh, debris from inside of the glass now that this is a little bit better taken apart. So now I'm gonna start with the reassembly of this lens. And that's where things start to get a little bit interesting, especially with refocusing the lens so that it focuses correctly back at infinity. Just clean that up a little. 
Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just slide the lens or the focusing ring back onto the helicoils here. Um, and just kind of just slide it in anywhere for now. And I'm also going to replace those three or the four screws going around in the inside there and there. Um, but I'm not going to tighten them down all the way and I'll show why in a little while. But I'm just going to leave them loose so that the, uh, the focusing ring can still move independently. Um, and that's going to be important when we focus it back at infinity. So with those four screws in place, you want to just check that they're not too tight so that the exterior ring here turns independently of the actual focusing mechanism. And next, I'm going to reattach this back body section. There are two important parts on this. There's this depth of field scale, which also has this black metal section right here that kind of juts out. And what that does, as I mentioned, is it limits how far you can focus in either direction. So it slides back and forth in here like this and when it hits infinity it hit, hits a little thing here and stops and when it hits um, 0.6 meters it also stops on this side. The other important component on this is this metal post here and what this does is it slots into this groove on the focusing mechanism so that instead of just turning this metal ring actually moves up and down, which is what focuses the lens elements in and out um, when you turn the focusing ring. So eventually this focusing ring will turn the outside section here. You can kind of see it, this brass looking section. And that will move this internal section up and down because it's locked in place with this little post here. So to get things lined up, what I wanted to have is, since the depth of field scale is kind of on the opposite side, of where this post is. I'm going to just line up this groove on the opposite side of some of those numbers and try to slot things back in place. There are also four, um, there are also four screw holes on this that have to be relined up. Um, they're going around here and there are two sets. I think it's the ones on the right here that it actually goes in. Um, so I'm going to get those lined up afterwards. But to start with, I'm just going to get this um, post into the groove down there. So. Line that up, and the entire thing kind of just slots back on uh, once it's correctly lined up. It takes a little work sometimes. And one other thing I forgot to mention is that this slot here needs to be over this gap in the ring here so that these metal screws can actually fit in properly. So it just slides in like that. Uh, there we go. So it should click back and forth. Still not focusing in and out, which is what we want at this point. I'm just going to turn that over and then reattach those four screws going around there, 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 and there into their proper position. Okay, so before continuing on with the reassembly, I'm just going to briefly cover how you would focus this lens back correctly to infinity. Uh, in this one, it's a bit of a pain because of this black metal ring, which is, if you remember, it came off the front of the lens and was one of the first things that we removed. So what we want to be able to do to refocus at infinity is actually go in and move the focusing or move the internal helicoils, which is going to move the lens element up and down independently of the focusing ring. And by moving this, we can get it here correctly focused at infinity and then lock that down so that when this says infinity, in this case, if this was infinity right now, lock it down later. 
and then it would be correctly focusing. And the reason why this is difficult is because this black ring goes in like that. It completely blocks access to the, um, once it's installed, it blocks access to these things here. So you can't move this around like this and you can't tighten them back down. So what I found is that you have to do, which is a real pain, is reassemble the entire lens without this thing and then um, correctly focus it back to infinity and then disassemble at least part of the lens, um, which I can demonstrate which parts you need to put back together. Put this back on and then reassemble the entire thing for a final time. So if I was going to focus this to infinity um, and exclude this black ring, what I would do is I would install the diaphragm mechanism first. And I'm going to go through these individual steps later to actually show how they fit together. So this would just <laughs> slide back in there. Next, I would install the aperture control ring, which is going to couple on the back to the diaphragm assembly. And I would then install both front glass pieces, the front glass piece and the back glass piece, so the front here and the back. And finally, I would install the mounting plate on the back. So what you would have is the mounting plate and the entire lens put together except for this ring here. And there's no way you can actually install it, uh, install this ring um, while it's in, with the, while you're, you're focusing it to infinity. So what it would look like is basically somewhat like this. It looks somewhat like this with the big front glass piece. And you'll notice there's a tiny little edge here where I can still go in and just with a very thin little screwdriver or something, actually manually focus this, turn this internal ring here independently to focus it in and out. Um, and once you find where it's at infinity, remember this is still gonna just be turning freely. You would take the lens back apart, take everything out, get back to this stage here where you, you just have everything all separate. You can leave this in once you're doing the reassembly. You would lock the, this down by just tightening these screws down so while it's set to infinity, and that would lock it optically at infinity while the setting is at infinity. Then you would go back in, um, take off this back ring here, which is what's actually limiting the focusing in and out. So you would take off this back ring, focus it slightly more out, so you can reattach the front lens section here, like that, and then just continue on with the reassembly. So I know I covered that pretty quickly, and I'm actually gonna go through each of the individual steps now, um, but I'm gonna pretend that I've already done the focusing back to infinity. I'm just gonna lock this down for now. So they're gonna say that's infinity, and I'm gonna just reassemble the lens normally without doing all the uh, duplicate reassembly. So now, having described that whole complicated reassembly of how you would re refocus it back to infinity, I'm going to go through each step of just a normal disassembly or a normal reassembly, pretending that you've already focused it back to infinity correctly and locked that down. Um, and this is just going to be the same sequence of steps, but a lot slower and actually going to reattach things. So the first thing I'm going to do is just re put in the diaphragm back into the lens body. And on this, there's a groove in here and a little groove, uh, flat section right here, which should line up. And then the four screw holes around there will line up after that. There we go. I'm just going to put those four screws back in. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is to turn this intersection outwards so that I can get access. So it's sticking slightly out beyond there. And I'm going to reattach. Well, actually, I'm going to put in the front glass piece first. Um, It'll be a little bit easier to do this as the first step. That just screws back in place. Okay, and I can lock it down a little better later. 
But now I'm going to reattach this front metal ring. It has three little screws going around, little black screws that I have to reattach. And the reason I couldn't put this in before is because this actually sits on top of these screws here. Um, so I couldn't uh, find a way to get those out properly. Okay, and now I'm going to focus back inward so that those screws are hidden again. Just flip that over for now. Next, I'm going to reattach this black section with the depth of field scale on here. That's the next body piece. And as I showed before, it has the two posts, it has the post here in the back and then the other post up here, the one that limits how far you can focus. And you want to have the lens set so that it's... And you want to have the lens rotated so that this little slot here, here on the inner ring is on the opposite side of the depth of field scale. You can kind of rotate things around um, like that if they're not lined up. Because this metal bar has to go into that slot like this. And the only way that can work is if it's on the op opposite side. You also want to have this metal ring rotated so that this indentation up here is where the metal bar is where the metal bar has to go. Okay, and now the screw holes on this should line up if I just rotate it a little. There. So the four screws going around reattach that body section. You can check the rotation that it focuses correctly to the minimum focus and hits the maximum focus as well. And it's locked in place now. Next, I'm going to reattach the aperture control ring onto the lens body. The way this works is this: there's a lever over here on the aperture mechanism that's what actually controls the size of the aperture. So I can just move that back and forth. And on the aperture control ring, as you rotate this, there's a, a little metal bar with a little groove that actually slots onto that lever like this. And as you rotate, it opens and closes the aperture. And then the clicking sound, as I showed before, comes from a little ball bearing that sits in a little indentation right right here. So the first priority is to actually get the aperture control ring back on and the ball bearing in place. And to make that a little bit easier, I'm going to actually remove uh, this metal bar here, which is just held in place by two slotted screws. Okay, and next I'm going to put the ball bearing in place. It kind of should go right in a little indentation. Okay, and now with the aperture control wing with the little post on it facing downwards on the lens. So if this is the back of the lens, it's facing downwards. I'm going to slide the section with the little grooves in it, this section over here, over the ball bearing and get it, the entire thing, back onto the lens, hopefully. There we go. And now when I rotate this, it should make a little clicking sound. So to actually couple the entire thing back to the aperture control, or to the aperture mechanism, um, I have to reattach this metal bar that I took out earlier. So I'm just going to kind of line these up, get that metal bar in place. And you'll notice that the uh, there is some there the slots on this metal bar are pretty long for these two screws that I'm reattaching, uh, and that does allow you to slightly adjust 
how the aperture control ring couples to the aperture mechanism. So I can go in later and readjust this if things aren't quite working out. So now that I've reattached the metal bar here, that's actually coupling the aperture control ring, I can just test out and make sure everything's working okay. Just move back and forth this ring, and it looks pretty good. Uh, the one thing you might notice that I mentioned that you can adjust is that if the aperture is not opening up fully um, at the op uh, maximum position at 1-2, you can move this little bar around in the slots here, and that would actually make it open up fully or close it up a little more depending on what you're after. To continue on with the, dis or the, with the reassembly, I'm going to put back in the back lens group uh, and remember this just screws in place down in here. Okay, and I'm going to go in with a pointed spanning wrench, like this, to just lock it down. Uh, you can also use a regular spanning wrench, but you may have to go in at an earlier stage uh, to actually be able to access this bottom, uh, these two bottom slots where you need to screw uh, get the spanning wrench in properly. So, there, that's pretty good. And as the last step on the reassembly of the back of the lens, I'm going to reattach the mounting plate. On the aperture control mechanism, there's a, this little post over on this side, which is what actually moves, opens and closes the aperture. So, you can kind of see it opening and closing there. Um, and then on the mounting plate, there's this other lever here, which is what is on the outside of the lens. And these two couple together, so this one little bar pushes on this little lever down here and actually opens and closes the aperture. So you want to get these two lined up, and then there are these four screw holes that also have to be lined up. So going around there, there, and there. So I'll just put that in and then reattach this with the four long screws that I took out before. And finally, I'm just going to flip over the lens and to complete the reassembly, I'm going to put back in this metal black ring that just screws in place and kind of holds that front glass piece in place. And you get there's once I get this a little closer, I'm going to lock it down with the spanning wrench. There are two divots there and there that I'm going to use the spanning wrench on. So that pretty much completes the reassembly. Uh, if it was focused correctly back at infinity, you should be all set. Um, so everything, you can check out, make sure that everything's working, focusing, aperture, yep, everything looks good. So overall, this lens is hard to take apart because there's so much glass for one and it's a little bit differently constructed internally than other lenses like the 1.4 or the 1.7 just because of how much glass there is um, and it really required a unique design to actually be able to accommodate that much. And it's also a little bit difficult to take apart because of how it's laid out and how you have to focus it back to infinity. I wasn't able to find a good way where you could just take it apart and easily focus it to infinity and then um, reconnect a few pieces and put the lens back together. I actually had to disassemble it um, and then reassemble it partially and then disassemble it again and then reassemble it again. So if anybody knows a better way of doing that, please let me know. But that was the only way I could find to adjust this particular lens. But overall, it's a beautiful lens and it's definitely worth um, having in your collection. It's really unique. It's not the sharpest lens I mentioned, but it's great for portraits and it's just a really great lens overall. So definitely worth trying to repair.